Hey there, boaters. I'm Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Friday's episode of The Boaters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was brought to you by Abby's dad. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now let's see what's making waves in nautical news. The Old and Stream magazine has come out with their list of America's best fishing cities. Their editors say these cities kick bass and have rated them from 1 to 20. Coming in at number 5 is New Orleans. Dubbed the Land of Giants, New Orleans offers excellent fresh and saltwater fishing. Take your pick from plentiful largemouth bass to tarpon. Another great city for both sail and freshwater fishing is the number four pick, Seattle. Although known for its salmon, Puget Sound offers year-round fishing for halibut, flounder, and rockfish. It's not just coastal cities that made the cut. Number three on the list is a tie of sorts, the Twin Cities. The Minneapolis-St. Paul region not only has the Mississippi River, but over 100 lakes stocked full of bass, carp, and catfish, just to name a few. And don't forget the popularity of ice fishing. San Diego is being called the sports fishing capital and takes the number two seat. Here you'll find that tuna and billfish are abundant. And if you get bored, you can always fly fish for Mako sharks. In a great fishing city, field and stream editors say fishing pervades the lifeblood of the urban scene. Living in their top pick city, Miami, I must say I completely agree. There's rarely a bridge I travel over that isn't lined with fishermen. The docks of local marinas sell fresh catches year-round. And at night, the bay lights up with shrimp boats crisscrossing for hours on end. To find out what other cities made the list, go to www.fieldandstream.com. Next up, it's time for our Boat Test Reports Feature of the Week. Larson continues to improve upon the success of the Cabrio line. Using outside engineers helps keep the model fresh from year to year and prevents the tunnel vision often seen with other builders. Starting on the bow, the 330 offers a large space for relaxing at anchor and soaking up some rays. In the center, there's plenty of room for flat screen displays. Lighted rocker switches and the stereo remote are at your fingertips to the right and left of the tilt mahogany wheel. Snap-in carpet protects your feet on hot summer days and is standard on the 330. You'll enjoy many wonderful sunsets on board and with the wet bar, you'll be able to serve drinks and snacks easily. Next to the wet bar is an aft port side bench and across is a large U-shaped lounger with portable table that converts to a large sun pad. Beneath the easy lift hatch we have twin 5.7 LGI Volvos and a 5kW generator with room for service. Volvos gasoline fuel injected engines deliver great torque and power for today's cruising style. Stepping into the spacious salon you appreciate the light the large hatches provide inside. The cabin is really arranged well with a well lit inviting and comfortable space. The L-shaped salon offers comfort from the sun and a great place to enjoy a video or a glass of wine with friends. For extra sleeping accommodations, the salon easily converts into a double berth. The galley includes lots of dry goods storage, large portal for natural lighting, coffee maker, and a microwave. The V-berth has a 13-inch LCD TV with a DVD as standard. The flying steps into the cabin allow a more open feel to the mid-cabin space, which has individual reading lights. The enclosed fiberglass lined head has a shower with hand wand, curtain, sink, and a vacuum flush head with pump out. I really like the spring loaded cache that keeps the transom door from rattling when underway. Across the center is another large box to store lines, fenders, and water toys. The 330 offers one of the best swim platforms in the line for enjoying your time on the water. The Cabrio 330 weighs in at 11,400 pounds and measures 32 feet in length overall. She has a beam width of 11 feet 6 inches and a bridge clearance of 9 feet 4 inches. Don't let the size of the 330 fool you, she's quick on her feet and smooth handling. 
She jumped on plane in just 4.7 seconds and proved to be 30 miles per hour in only 8.1 seconds. Best cruise was around 27 miles per hour at 3,500 RPM with a range of 297 miles on a full tank. She tops out at 45 miles per hour, turning 5,200 RPM. Thanks to Boat Test for that report. To see more of this test, you can cruise on over to Boat Test's website at www.boattest.com. And in Did You Know, towing and salvage are not the same. The process of salvage is often misunderstood by recreational boaters and many times confused with towing. Historically and legally, salvage is any voluntary and successful rescue of a boat, its cargo, and or its passengers from a peril at sea. Peril is the key word here. If a grounded boat can rest safely before the rising tide sets it free, or a boat drifts in calm waters after losing power, the situation will most likely call for towing. But if the grounded boat is taking on water or the boat drifting is being propelled in heavy seas towards a rocky shoal, salvage will probably be called for. While towing services often have set prices, the cost of salvage isn't as clear. The owner of a boat in need of help should always ask whether the job is towing or salvage before accepting aid. The cost of salvage can be very high and is often a percentage of the boat's post-casualty value. If possible, get a price in writing, but if the situation only allows for an oral agreement, try to have someone witness it. Sometimes a salvage job is done without a predetermined cost of claim. It's a myth that a person who saves a vessel from peril is awarded title to the vessel. But you should understand that a contract is not necessary in order for a salver to make a salvage claim. The salver only needs to demonstrate that the effort was voluntary, that it was successful, and that the vessel rescued was in peril. The best protection against a salvage bill is to have an insurance policy that provides for salvage up to the full value of the boat and no deductible for salvage costs. If your boat needed to be salvaged, you're likely dealing with enough problems. Let your insurance company negotiate the final charge or deal with arbitration. The last place you want to end up is in federal court. Boat US has fairly detailed articles on salvage, including a salvage contract available for download on their website. To learn more, go to www.boatus.com. Now it's time to reveal Stacy's TheBoaters.com celebrity profile pick of the day, which is... Captain Mike Garwood and his 33-foot formula, Seaworthy. Mike and his family love boating on the Delaware River. Now that's a boat name graphic. Here's the gang on a beautiful 4th of July at Penn's Landing, Philadelphia. Welcome to the boaters and congrats on your sea celebrity status. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is... If only I sprang for those padded seats. Submitted by Alicia Norbury. And that'll do it for this episode of The Boaters TV. See you back here on Monday.